Rebuilding Rutgers from the Ashes is produced by NJ Advanced Media. Subscribe and listen to the show at nj.com slash podcast. Join the conversation on Twitter by using hashtag Rebuilding Rutgers. Rutgers head coach Chris Ash has made many changes at the Scataway as he attempts to build a winning program. New coaching staff, new offense, new uniforms. But at the end of the day, talent wins games, and recruiting strong, talented players has been difficult for the Scarlet Knights. Will that change under Ash? Welcome to Rebuilding Rutgers from the Ashes. I'm Joe Gillia. In episode three, we take you inside Ash's recruiting efforts in his first year on the job. How will things be different than previous years? What do high school coaches think of Ash? Does it matter that he lacks ties to New Jersey? Here's NJ Advance Media reporter Tadara Hunt who talked to more than a dozen high school coaches and players around New Jersey to get their thoughts on Rutgers' new approach to recruiting. In 1996, Bill Walsh came to Rutgers for a coaching clinic and delivered a rousing speech to New Jersey high school coaches. Wouldn't it be something if New Jersey made Rutgers another Penn State, the NFL Hall of Fame coach said? Do you know how long that would take? Two or three years. Well, that was 20 years and four coaches ago, and Rutgers still has the same challenge keep the best New Jersey high school football players from fleeing the state to play for more successful programs. Greg Schiano tried. Kyle Flood tried. This challenge reaches back further than Dick Anderson, who was plucked from Penn State in 1984 in order to, you guessed it, help Rutgers stop the Nittany Lions from pilfering local talent. It didn't work. And now, decades later, Chris Ash, insisting he will build a fence around the garden, will try to do what others have failed at, coax the most coveted New Jersey high school players to Rutgers. Uh, well, when uh, we got here to Rutgers, we came in with a plan, um, plan to attack a lot of different areas, and one of them was recruiting. And uh, one of the attractions to this job was the high school talent in this whole region. Uh, here in the state of New Jersey, eastern Pennsylvania, New York, uh, there's a ton of high school talent here. And any time... You can basically car recruit uh, to build a program. You have a chance for success. And that was one of the goals and challenges that we had is how can we uh, basically draw a circle um, you know, within three hours of, of a campus and go out and, and uh, recruit all the, the talented players that are here and, and uh, provide an environment uh, here at Rutgers that they want to be a part of. And um, if we can do that, then we think we have a chance to build the type of program that we want. As of mid-August... Ash and staff are already off to a good start with 20 commitments, including 15 players from New Jersey. One is four-star Maryland linebacker Tyshawn Fogg, who was born and raised in Asbury Park. But Rutgers fans also remember the parade of New Jersey talent that left for football powerhouses. Brian Toll, Will Hill, Brian Cushing, Noshawn Moreno, Rashawn Gary, Jabril Peppers, Minka Fitzpatrick, and on and on. Ash hopes to lock down the state then look elsewhere for even more talent. Why is Ohio State Ohio State? It's because it's a state filled with talented high school players. And what do they do first? They recruit uh, the state of Ohio. Uh, and then what they can't uh, find uh, or feel like they have in the state of Ohio, they go out and recruit nationally and, and try to uh, recruit some of the top-ranked players around the nation. If you look at every successful uh, college football program that has had a ch- you know has won consistently for years, what do they have in common? They have a state full of talented high school players, and they start their recruiting uh, efforts right there locally at home. Uh, Ohio State, uh, Texas, um, LSU, uh, USC, you name it, uh, Florida, where do they start their recruiting uh, at? It's right there at home, and, uh, you know, well, we're going to do the same, and if we can't get guys here, then we're going to have to go to other states and try to recruit just like everybody else does. Rutgers has three four-star players committed to go along with 17 three-star recruits. Many experts who evaluate recruiting classes place Rutgers' 2017 group in the top 25 among 128 Division I schools. Now, the ranking can rise or fall before National Signing Day in February, but a class that strong would stop a disturbing trend at Rutgers. In 2013, Rutgers' average national rank was 41st. In 2014, it dropped to 55th. In 2015, it was 54th. And in 2016, It was 73rd and worst in the Big Ten. Why so bad? Well, part of the reason was because, with the firing of Kyle Flood, Ash had only four weeks to salvage a recruiting class already in chaos. 
But of course, there was the usual reason too. Rucker simply could not get New Jersey kids to stay home. So far, Ash appears to have slowed the exodus. Recruiting analyst Steve Wiltfong of 24-7 Sports explains why he believes Ash and his staff have had early success. I know there's been a lot of times recently where the Scarlet Knights have struggled to get quality guys in the boat this early in the cycle. And the thing that stands out the most and, and impresses me the most, Coach Ash and his staff, and anytime you have a coaching staff at Rutgers, they're going to tell you how important New Jersey is. And uh, For Coach Ash and his staff, they've proven that New Jersey is, is important to them by actually pounding the pavement and going out and connecting with the high school coaches and being visible in the schools. It's not just about saying, hey, these are the top guys in New Jersey, so we're going to recruit them and try and get them. They're, as a whole, making the state of New Jersey feel part of the Rutgers football community. And I think over time, you're already seeing it. You're already seeing those relationships transpire quickly in the form of verbal commitments. But I think over time, especially if Coach Ash and the the staff can get them to win some games. Uh, And and Rutgers, people forget Rutgers has won double-digit games recently. You can win at Rutgers. You're going to start seeing Rutgers win even more high-profile recruiting titles in the state. Uh, I just, again, saying that it's a priority and recruiting the top kids hard, Coach Ash and his staff have taken that to another level by just being genuine with their relationships with the Jersey high school coaches and and showing them that they appreciate them and the open door policy and them going out to different parts of the state and and, and meeting and talking with those coaches and having chalk talks and and things of that nature. You can already tell that the high school coaches that I've talked to feel differently about this Rutgers staff. In the past, getting the best New Jersey players to choose Rutgers was difficult. With a long history of losing, the Scarlet Knights didn't have much to offer, just a lot of promises and the personality of the head coach. Former Rutgers quarterback Mike Till was one of the few who bought in, even though he grew up well aware of Rutgers' futility, including one of the most infamous blowouts in school history. You know, back then, I think a lot of it was the challenge. Um, You know, Coach Ciano and the vision that he had and the belief in, in the fact that he was going to get that accomplished, he made you buy into it. And, you know, it was kind of blind faith because when I was a sophomore, they lost to West Virginia 80-7. to seven. So there, there were no results to prove that it was going to happen. But it just by the way he went about it and the way that he talked to all of us, he had a feeling that somehow, some way, it was going to, it was going to come together. But it's tough to win consistently with a player here and a player there. St. Joseph Montvale head coach Augie Hoffman was a top recruit out of Joe's in 1999. Back then, he says, few New Jersey standouts would give Rutgers a sniff. Ash believes he can change that. He hopes to make Rutgers a destination not only for New Jersey's top prospects, but the top talent throughout the region. But we've heard this before. Can Rutgers still a talented Philly recruit from Temple? A top-rated Pennsylvanian recruit from Penn State? Can the Scarlet Knights pick the pockets of Syracuse, Maryland, and Virginia? Even when New Jersey is better secured, Rutgers will still need to poach players from other states if it's going to compete against Big Ten teams that, year in and year out, are legitimate national championship contenders. Wilt Funk says the Scarlet Knights won't beat Ohio State, Michigan, Michigan State, and others with hometown talent alone. Rutgers isn't going to win a Big Ten championship by recruiting the state alone, in my opinion, or compete for Big Ten championships, but there's enough to really uh, be the foundation of your roster. And then you can go into the DMV, and you can go into Florida, Texas, Georgia, California, and and take a kid here, take a kid there, and, and build it around your Jersey nucleus. I think... But there's enough guys that in Jersey where Rutgers can make it their nucleus, but certainly not enough to carry them all the way to what they want to be. New Jersey is rich in high school talent and produces roughly 80 players each year who have a shot to play at the highest college level. Michael Clark, a six foot five, 270-pound offensive tackle out of St. John Vianney, is Rutgers' highest-rated commit. His stepbrother, Jamal Beatty, is also coming to Rutgers. They were focusing on getting the best guys in New Jersey, keeping them there, and that, like, that's what really made me really like 
consider Rutgers, then the thing that filled it off was when my brother got offered. So it was just going on the next day, waking up in the morning, talking to him, saying, yo, when do you want to commit? You thinking about it? You want to do it with me? But, like, are you ready to do this? Like, we, we got what we wanted ever since we were growing up. Of course, there will be players who want to play for Rutgers and have been dreaming about it since they first strapped on the Pee Wee football helmet. Maybe they want to stay close so mom and dad can attend every game. Maybe they've grown up wearing Rutgers jerseys and going to Rutgers games and can't imagine playing anywhere else. Union defensive end Mike Tverdov, another Rutgers commit, says he wasn't a hard sell because Rutgers is in his DNA. His brother Pete played for the Scarlet Knights. Yeah, it just feels amazing. You know, I, I watched that program rise up from the bottom. You know, in the early years, my brother went there, and you know, I, I didn't realize how important it was when I was younger, a little boy. But you know, just I grew up a Rutgers fan. You know, Rutgers is in my blood, literally. You know, I, I, I'm always down in Piscataway, New Brunswick. My brother is a tailgate bus. There's Rutgers pictures all over my house. I, I know, I know so much about Rutgers history, the players, the school. So for me, it was kind of you know, just just making it official myself, and you know, for for, for the, I've waited for this day to come for a very long time, and I couldn't be happier. Conventional wisdom for years at Rutgers was: if you want to land Jersey kids, you need to have people on staff from the Garden State. But Ash and staff are hoping that, even though they're out of towners, the personal ties they're building with high school coaches will help Rutgers stave off Penn State, Michigan, and others. I mean, it's no different than any other job. I mean, this is a, a, a football job. You know, and, and I'm a football coach, and it's no different than what I've done everywhere I've been. It's no different than any of these coaches have ever been. You don't have to be from a particular region or particular state to go coach football and recruit. And uh, um, that's not in a, a, a coaching manual anywhere that I've ever seen. You know, it's about uh, being a, a real person. It's about being open. It's being honest. It's about being able to communicate effectively. Um, and it's about doing a, a good job and working extremely hard. And, and that's what we've been able to do. When Rutgers staff had the first sit-down with high school coaches at a restaurant in Karlstadt in January, some, like Hoffman, were skeptical. One of the most respected coaches in New Jersey, Anthony Campanelli, had been let go from the Rutgers staff when Ash took over. I was a little hesitant, to be honest. You know, at that time, you know, Anthony Campanelli was, uh, was, was our, our link to Rutgers. His, his future was kind of out of the air. I'm a loyal guy. You know, him not potentially being there was not sitting well with me. I uh, kind of went into that get together, basically getting ready to not write them off, but just really not be, you know, as uh, as open as I'm sure they would have liked it to be. And I gotta tell you, I mean, they did a great job. You know, Bill Bush recruits our area, and you know, it's funny his and my relationship has grown to be a very, a very solid one. He said, he goes, look, you're gonna you're gonna like me. You're gonna I'm gonna win you over. And right away, I'm like, dude, get out of here. You know what I mean? Like, I don't need any more friends or whatever. But I got to tell you, we've grown to be good friends. He's a great recruiter. He's a great coach. Uh, you know, Chris Ash and I have, uh, have sat down and talked numerous times. And uh, just, they're great guys. And uh, you know, I would love to see one of my kids end up in Rutgers. I really would. Nunzio Campanelli, Anthony's brother and head coach at Bergen Catholic, which turns out top talent year after year, says he suggested the get-together. I remember talking to Coach Ash uh, pretty quickly after he got hired and then, uh, you know, kind of maybe suggesting that might be a good idea at that time. And he kind of reached out to a couple guys and said, hey, you know, let's, you know, grab a spot and kind of help people make some of those relationships. Uh, what I do think is I think it was a great night for them from the standpoint of at least being able to put faces with names and, Guys be able to just say, hey, you know what, these are good guys, you know, and uh, everybody's got to give them a chance. Mike Teal is now the offensive coordinator at Don Bosco Prep. He says building relationships is critical in New Jersey because it's not a slam dunk that Jersey kids will want to stay home. It'll help Rutgers if trusted high school coaches tell parents and kids to give Rutgers a serious look. Teal believes the new Rutgers staff will give families what they crave, the truth, even if it hurts. New Jersey is different in the fact that relationships here are really important to a lot of people. And, uh, and you know, for Coach Flood, for that matter, he has been at Rutgers for, you know, 10 years or whatever it is. You know, you try and build a lot of those relationships. So 
I think a lot of the coaches up here were a little hesitant. One, because they'd never really met the guy before. But two, they didn't really know what he was going to be about. You know, what his plan was. It was the only really knew was you had a guy coming from, you know, the Urban Meyer coaching trade, but that's really all you knew. So I think that they've done a really good job as far as making themselves available. Um, you know, when, when the open periods are, are up, when the, when the coaches can get out on the road, they, they do a good job coming by and spending time and, and doing all the little things that you need to do. And, and I think the biggest thing for anyone, you know, a- anywhere for that matter, especially in New Jersey in general, is you got to be honest, you know, because not everything that you always say is going to be something that a coach wants to hear, but you respect it if, if you get consistency. Um, and, you know, I, I deal with Bill Bush all the time, and I, I think the biggest thing that I've been impressed with from him and, and really all the guys, Coach Ash and, and all of them, is that, you know, if I have a question about a kid, that, you know, are they recruiting them, where they at with them, you know, what's the process for that kid, they, they shoot it straight. And you appreciate that more than, you know, the kind of the college recruiting game that has become a little bit where, you know, you kind of beat around the bush and, you give the, the glass half full answer. One thing Till respects about the new Rutgers coaching staff is its willingness to listen. The one thing I would say would be something about Mike Maietti. Um, the fact that, you know, he, he didn't have any 1A offers. He, he had a lot of interest, but Coach Ash called me and asked what I thought of Mike. I said, if you, if you play for this kid, I guarantee you will not be disappointed and you'll get a kid that plays for you sometime um, in his career. And and they went back and they watched the film and, and, and he went there. And from the reports that I've got, he's been one of the most impressive freshman offensive linemen that's down there right now. You know, so I think that that right there shows, you know, a little bit of faith in, you know, in us, meaning the high school coaches. So the Rutgers staff has some faith in us saying that, hey, if we tell you that there's a kid that we think can help, you know, you believe us. And, and they did and they went on them. And, and I think they're going to be really happy that they did. Nunzio Campanelli says the cloud that hung over Rutgers after last season's controversies has been blown away by Ash's fresh air. With a daunting challenge to make Rutgers competitive in the Big Ten, there's a positive attitude in Piscataway. They definitely have a very like upbeat vibe to the way they go about things. Uh, I think they seem to relate to kids pretty well. and There was definitely a, a good vibe to practice this spring. Uh, I, I think that that made an impression on a lot of kids. Um, and I, you know, I just think that people are giving them a, you know, a fair shake. I mean, hey, it's a great school and a, and a great conference, and um, you know, and I think they're also doing a pretty good job of getting kids to, you know, feel good about representing the state of New Jersey. And you know, I think that that's you know definitely a, a pretty good uh, way to go about it. You know, and uh, I think uh, kids take a lot of pride in the football that we play here, so uh, I think that that makes sense. Still. It's been four years since Rutgers landed its best class ever, and subsequent recruiting classes haven't measured up. Former Rutgers offensive lineman Donald Forbes, who publishes stateofruckers.com, sees similarities between Ash and Shiano, who set the standard for Rutgers recruiting. One being very focused and very organized individuals. Right, Coach Ash, um, you can see him writing down everything. He's um, taking a very deliberate approach, very similar to um, Shiano. When he has a plan and he's executing to that plan, obviously both being um, defensive-minded coaches, both being their um, specialties in the defensive backfield, that um, led it to a lot of similarities there. Um, both actually came from um, perennial powers, which they have um, seen what gets the job done. And and obviously both is, have been, at least from Ash's seven months on the um, job, has been doing, doing very good re- um, recruiting. I think that deliberate um, approach that um, I have a plan and we're executing to that plan, no matter what the outside forces say, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do it my way. Teal is having Shiano flashbacks too. You know, I walked in the bubble for one of their practices and Eric was and me were sitting there and we're standing and we're on the sideline and uh, we look at each other and we're like, shoot, this feels like the old times. You know, the intensity, the, you know, the, the perfectionness that Coach Ash is, and again, I don't, I don't know him very well for too long, but every interaction I've had with him, you know, he talks about wanting to be the best, and, and I think that's what you have to talk about. 
you know, you know you're playing in the in the one of the toughest conferences in the country, especially on the east side of the Big Ten. But if you don't talk about being the best, you're going to be the best. And I think that's what he's done. I think that's what he's he's gotten those kids down there to kind of buy into, which in turn I think is showing the recruiting. Rutgers can make alliances with high school coaches, connect with parents, get help from former Rutgers stars, and stock Hale Center with the best recruiters the school has ever seen. But if, after all these years, Rutgers is finally going to become the first choice for New Jersey talent, Ash believes it'll be because the Scarlet Knights gave players what they want, a winning tradition, and the tools to succeed. Uh, We came in with a a specific plan about winning the locker room here, and if we could win the locker room uh, with our players and and, uh, the relationships that we build with them, the environment that we create, the way they train, the way they eat, where they live, and uh, make them feel like they're part of a first-class organization uh, that's helping them reach their full potential, that the word would spread. Uh, What do do every high school, uh, what does every high school player want to be a part of? They want to be a part of a first-class organization. They want to be up uh, uh, at a place that they know they're going to be developed to reach their full potential. They're going to be coach charters, they're going to be disciplined, there's going to be structure, they're going to have fun, uh, and they're going to be able to relate to the people in the organization. And if we can create an environment like that, recruiting uh, success will be a byproduct of that. And that's where it all started. We've created an environment here in the Hale Center. Uh, we've created relationships with our players uh, that have uh, allowed us to bring prospects here and allow our players to help us recruit, and that's what's happened. All right, Tyler, I think the thing that stood out to me the most there is I feel like we've had this conversation before, right, with new Rutgers coaches coming in and they want to keep these kids here in New Jersey. Do you think it'll be different now with this coaching staff and with Chris Ash? Well, they're certainly off to a good start. I mean, again, these commitments aren't binding until National Signing Day in February, but uh, they've got 20 kids committed, um, a lot of the top kids throughout the state, uh, the number two player in the state, and uh, Micah Clark. They're certainly doing some things uh, the right way from the beginning, and I think it really comes down to um, – having satisfaction within your team and keeping the players happy because these are the players that are going to host young recruits on official visits, um, the guys that they'll be talking to about, um, you know, what's Rutgers really like. And these are guys that are going to be around these kids alone when no coaches are around. So they have to really feel uh, positive about the experience that they're having uh, in order to be able to help sell these kids uh, on their school. I went through the official visit process myself. Uh, I went to certain schools in which I had players tell me you don't want to come here save yourself Uh, this is a terrible place and I think Rutgers is really working on uh, keeping uh, the in-house straight and keeping those players happy and uh, doing all the right things to progress as a football program and, and that's what's helped them initially. What do you think matters the most? Now, you're around these kids all the time, and you're around these schools, and when, when these kids are making their decisions. For Rutgers, what do they have to get in order to get these kids? Like, what matters? Is it winning? Is it the spread offense, which I know is, is probably a cool thing as a lot of high school kids are playing it, so it's probably comfortable to come over and play in it. Is it winning? Is it facilities? Is it the spread? What do you think matters the most to these kids that Rutgers has to sell them? Well, obviously, each kid is different and has different needs and desires, but I think at the end of the day, what it comes down to is being able to tell a family member or a friend, hey, I'm committed to Rutgers, uh, and not have any negative feedback uh, from those people due to the perception of the program. Um, and that's all always a work in progress for Rutgers. You want to be able to proudly tell your uncle or your aunt, hey, I'm going to Rutgers without hearing about uh, why that's not a good decision. Why not Florida State? Why not in Alabama? And I think that's what Chris Ash understands. And, um, you know, it's obviously uh, a process um, that they've uh, devoted a lot of time to. um, And they're putting a lot of work into building a program from the ground up, hence uh, rebuilding Rutgers uh, and doing things the right way. So they certainly seem to be off uh, to a good start. Now, what about the idea of these kids all staying home or the hope they could, right? Because, you know, we heard all these years about how much talent is in New Jersey, right? And they go on to other places sometimes. Sometimes they stay here, but sometimes they go on to other places and they do well. And Rutgers fans, I always feel like, have this vision that if all these kids stayed home, Rutgers could be a truly great college football team. Your mind, you know it better than anyone in this state. How good could Rutgers be if they really keep the best of the best here? And they can certainly be very good, especially, you know, as far as their base. You'll have to reach outside the state at some point, sure. as Wilt Fon mentioned earlier uh, in the podcast. 
Um, the, there will certainly be areas of need in which you'll need to poach players uh, uh, for specific positions. But as far as your recruiting base, you want to be able to land you know, 12 of those top 20 players uh, in New Jersey. Keep those guys home because there's a lot of talent here. Um, every single year, there's up, upwards of 80 players that at least have a chance to play FBS football. And we're such a small state. So that's just a tribute to the work these coaches do throughout the state, uh, the off-season programs, conditioning. There's tons of seven-on-seven programs popping up, which I think have really helped New Jersey catch up to some of those uh, SEC schools that have spring football. Uh, obviously, that's not something that we have here, but with all the other um, off-season activity, uh, these kids are catching up, especially at the skill positions, and uh, it, it's definitely a fruitful state. What have you heard so far about Chris Ash when you're out and talking to kids and coaches? Now, it's early, right? He hasn't had much of a chance to make an impression yet, but he's probably made a little bit of one um, so far in his tenure here. Is it an exciting Excitement. What, what word would you use to describe what people on the one level below in, in high school football are starting to hear and think about the new coaching staff? Well, I, I think one of the things that, that certainly pops up a lot is that he's a straight shooter, uh, that it, he'll give it to you straight, you know, whether it's good or bad. Uh, he'll be honest with you. He'll tell you exactly where you stand, where they stand with you, and they'll treat you fairly, um, fairly evaluate you. And at the end of the day, if you can play here, you'll have that opportunity. And if you can't, uh, then you won't. Um, and also, I think he's done a nice job bouncing out uh, work with a little bit of play. I mean, obviously, you know, a lot of football coaches you see out there, you know, really push guys around, grind them down. And, and I mean, football, college football is a grind. I mean, from 6 a.m. in the morning to 10 p.m. at night, you're doing some type of football-related activity, you know, whether it be um, study hall or uh, the meeting room or the training table or practice or film. It's always something. So you got to really love this sport uh, to be able to do that. And I think they've done a nice job um, getting the guys together for barbecues, doing different team activities. You see them at the pool and going out different places and um, really building bonds as brothers uh, to go out there on the field together and compete. And I think that bleeds down throughout all the recruiting classes. Again, those players are, are around these recruits once they get on campus. Um, um, and I think that swell of emotion has helped them early on. Yeah, it certainly sounds like they couldn't. They, obviously, the players talk and they know each other. All right, so I feel like it really bothers Rutgers fans, and I think it would bother any fan base, not just here with Rutgers, when outside schools, big-time schools, and rivals come into the state of New Jersey and take kids out. And we had know all that nonsense that went on with Jim Harbaugh a couple of months ago when he was in New Jersey. You mentioned a few minutes ago 12 out of 20. That was the number you used. If you can keep 12 out of the 20 best New Jersey kids, you're going to build a good base. So do we make too big of a deal of when Michigan comes in and gets one of those 20 or Ohio State comes in and gets one of those 20? Or is that kind of the reality of college football recruiting that no matter what Chris Ash does, there's going to be some kids that do get away to big schools? Oh, absolutely. You're, you're not going to keep everybody. And, and, and honestly, it's not in the best interest of every single recruit to stay home and go to Rutgers. I mean, uh, you know, there are some kids who – uh, may live in areas in which there are negative influences and they'd be better off getting away and just getting completely out of the state. I mean, each recruit situation uh, is independent, um, but they don't have to get them all. But you got to get a good percentage of them, and I think you'll give yourself a shot to win. Yeah, so far so good, and it's going to be fun to watch to see how this progresses and this Chris Ash era uh, really takes force when it comes to recruiting. Next time on Rebuilding Rutgers from the Ashes. There's a new rival in town, and his name is Harbaugh, Jim Harbaugh. The University of Michigan coach continues to pluck the best New Jersey high school talent away from Rutgers' backyard, and Chris Ash is no longer going to let it happen without a fight. I've been in this league enough. I know uh, what uh, is out there. I know what other people are doing. I know what the uh, strengths and weaknesses of, of uh, programs are, and um, we're not intimidated by anybody. 